Welcome to Banks Unboxing, where every day is Christmas. CompCams just released a brand new Duramax camshaft, and we have the very first one. We had to wait for the FedEx guy, but he finally showed up at quitting time. And instead of one box with a cam in it, I got two boxes. So let's see what we've got here. I want to go with the mystery box first because no telling what Billy Godbold at Comp Cams is up to and what he has sent me here. With T-shirts, banners, fender cover, apron, there, I'll make it more readable. <laughs> All right, where do we start? Whoa, comp cam decals. All right. Put, put them on the front fender of my hot rod. And t-shirts, my favorite color. Black. I think we're going to suit up the whole place, to tell you the truth. There was a guy, Dean Moon, Moon Equipment Company. And every place he went. Every men's room he ever went into, he put this small moon eyes decal on the mirror above the sink. Kind of strange, the places you found moon's decals. <laughs> That's all I got to say. What have we got here? Oh, a three foot by eight foot banner. And we've got three of those. Oh, now we're getting into, what do we got here? Aprons. Now that rocks. Shop aprons, these are cool. Fender covers. You know, when you've got a great paint job on your car, you best be using a fender cover. All right, let me pack this stuff up. I wanna to move to the camshaft. Thank you, Billy, for all the swag. We will use it properly. Let's move to the cam. So this is going to be something special. You know, a lot of guys hot rod diesels and never get to the camshaft. It's like they'll put compound turbocharging. They'll do all kinds of stuff, but somehow they never get to the camshaft itself or the pistons. So why did I order this? We're running a series called Killing a Duramax. And we just recently made 852 horsepower at 3,300 RPM. Okay, let's go for 800. 820, 30. Coming down to 17. 852. Engine's still running. Oh my God. There's no parts on the floor, no oil on the wall. The stock horsepower peak on that L5P engine is 2,800 RPM. I'm turning it 500 RPM past the natural horsepower peak. I'm basically out of camshaft. My next step is to remove some exhaust pumping restriction. The flow of the exhaust out of the heads up into the turbocharger and out of the turbocharger off to the world. That's going to be a pumping loss reduction, which will free up some parasitic horsepower used for that purpose. It will get more exhaust out of the cylinder and at the same manifold air density, I'll get a higher percentage of cylinder fill. I expect to go from 8 foot 52 to nominally 900 horsepower. Just a little teaser, over my shoulder, Eric has been working on all new up pipes, turbo mounting, air intake, and a full five inch exhaust. And we're hoping that using the same turbo will get us to 900 horsepower. All right, I wanna open the box and have a look at this camshaft. Now this is gonna be a billet camshaft, which means 
that it's made out of one solid piece of bar stock. Get this. Ah, there we go. My God. Yep. So this cam started as a piece of round stock and it's 5160 steel. And what they've done at COP is they machined away everything that didn't look like a camshaft. The result is what you see here. Now I want to check the grind number, which should be on the back end. 132-300-13, that's the pup. They rough machine it, the induction harden it to 60 on the Rockwell C scale, and then they finish grind it and you have this thing of beauty. The features of this camshaft make it capable of fitting all the way from 01, 2001, to through 2020 Duramax engines. We just confirmed over the last couple of weeks, working back and forth with Comp and looking at the grinds that they had available, working back and forth, taking measurements inside of an L5P, what we could fit in there and not have the valves hit the pistons and not lift the valve up so far off the seat that we coil bind the springs. This is a stock valve spring grind. For those of you who don't know what a cam is or how it works, basically this is a device that opens the valves to let the air in and let the exhaust out. A cam follower, in this case a roller cam follower or, or tap it, actuates a push rod to a rocker arm that pushes the valve open. I'm going to get a lot more detailed in an upcoming Killing a Duramax episode, but let me just walk you through the basic differences here. The stock cam, which are the blue traces on the graph, has a maximum li lift on the intake valve of 375 thousandths and on the exhaust of 382 thousandths of an inch. The duration on the intake at 50 thousandths valve lift is 155 degrees, and on the exhaust it's 164 degrees. You guys that are into gasoline, this is amazingly mild. By mild I mean short duration. But I want to move this engine from 3300 to 3800 RPM. I'm, and I want the horsepower to be at 3800, fully 1000 RPM higher than stock. In order to do that and keep the stock valve springs, we had to limit the valve lift to 400 thousandths. On the comp cam, which they call a stage one stock valve spring camshaft, 400 thousandths just squeaks in. You go much more and you're gonna coil bind the valve springs. It's there, it's safe. The duration, that's what I wanna talk about. The duration is now, on the intake, 186 degrees. That's 31 degrees more than the stock cam. And on the exhaust, it's 200 degrees or 36 degrees more than the stock cam. This is a lot more camshaft. And the way it's set up, the exhaust blowdown starts earlier, which is great for higher RPM because there's less time for the cylinder to blow down before the piston comes up on the exhaust stroke. And the intake valve opening starts much earlier, helping us with cylinder fill and still closing at the right time coming up on the compression stroke. In other words, if you're going to increase the intake lobe, this is the way to do it. As you come up and start compressing the gas in the cylinder, if you close the intake valve, too late on the compression stroke, you won't get enough compressive heat to adequately fire the fuel that you're going to inject as the piston nears top dead center. The first time I changed the camshaft in an engine, it was a Model A Ford, that I, a 40 horsepower engine, and I did two, actually three things. I increased the compression ratio, I put an overhead valve conversion on it that gave me greater airflow in, giving me a higher percent of cylinder fill. I went to dual carburetors, which gave me higher pressure air into the cylinder at wide open throttle. 
the engine went from 40 horsepower to 105 horsepower. And the most magic part of all of it was the Winfield camshaft that I put in that engine. The engine went from nominally 2,200 RPM to like 4,000, 4,500 RPM. It just was a world of difference. I've been enchanted by camshafts ever since. And let me tell you, you know, in the 50s and 60s, hot rods had so much valve overlap that they idled rough. And that lumpy, thumper type thing was a sign of manhood. We're not going to get that with this diesel, but we're going to get a hell of a lot more valve open time. A little bit more lift, a hell of a lot more open time on the exhaust and the intake. I can't wait to stuff this thing into that L5P.